Greetings riders, Nick here with Pegasus Motorcycle Tours and Consulting. It's another perfect Southern California day. I'd much rather go surfing, but what I have to do right now is go through the carb of this 2006 DRZ 400S. I picked it up recently with only 600 original miles, so it's been sitting most of its life. Uh, telltale sign that the carb is going to definitely need going through. I'm going to take advantage and actually replace the tank as well with this uh, IMS 4 gallon desert tank just to increase the range. So stay with me while we do this and uh, yeah, let's get dirty. If there was only a motorcycle that was just as capable on dirt as the DRZ 400, but you know, was electronically fuel injected, didn't have the carb but also was capable on the highway as well, cruising speeds, you know, 70 miles an hour, stable, yet still light, maybe in the mid 300s, and, you know, had the same amount of suspension travel, somewhere around, around let's say, 11 inches, is that fair? And maybe even had some modern amenities like ABS, wouldn't that be amazing? Boom, the BMW G650X, the Cross Challenge, one of three models that BMW created between 2006 and 2009, that were unfortunately, surprisingly, a total sales flop. Uh, they shared the same 650 engine as the BMW G650 GS and previously F650 GS. The Rotex engine created previously in Austria. I speak about it when I review these bikes. So take a look at that. Uh, amazing motorcycle. You probably haven't even heard about this bike. It's very rare and that's okay. This is gonna be our backup vehicle, our, our support vehicle. Uh, it's 350 pounds, about 50 horsepower and 44 foot-pounds of torque, ABS, and just flies on the highway. I mean, it's just super stable. I love it. So please stay tuned for a proper review of this motorcycle that I think just blows the RZ out of the water. But this video is dedicated to getting this guy on the road. So how does one diagnose a car problem? Well, everything will have to do with how the bike starts, if it starts, and how it idles how it rides. This bike will start, but if you try to twist the throttle, it'll die. So I have to go through the carb and, and clean all the, the pilot jets and get all the carb and build up on there from the old gas that's been sitting. Uh, I'll show you what it sounds like if you actually try to start it so you kind of have an idea. I'm gonna pull out the choke even though it's very hot today. So it starts pretty well. And you see I'm twisting the throttle and it's just it wants to die and if I pull out pull the choke in barely and that'll do that so you need the following tools for this job an 8 millimeter wrench just to get rid of all the plastic to remove the seat and the tank as well you need a dedicated carb cleaner any will do with a little straw you need a Phillips head screwdriver and I like this magnetic plate just to keep everything in place all the little pieces that I take off uh, make sure you have a well lit and well ventilated large area just to be able to work in. A drain pan is also very, very helpful so that when you're cleaning the carb from the outside at least, all the, the nasty liquid can drain in a contained area. And shop towels, obviously. All right, let's get to it. Whenever I'm working on a bike, I like to leave the magnetic plate on my foot peg. It attaches fairly securely and all my little bolts that I take off are in one place. Otherwise, if you don't have that, just make sure you replace the bolts or start them back from the holes that you've taken them out so that you know where they go. Not all bolts are gonna be the same on all bikes. Don't lose the washers. You see how one is shorter, one is longer. Make sure you know where they go. This one just slides off. Okay, so because some bolts are different sizes, like these two, just put them back in the place that they were removed from. Now you need a 10 mil for the two bolts that are holding down the tank. And on this side, we already removed the plastics from the tank and we let this one hang. So this procedure is gonna be equal on all bikes. However, in this particular combination, we have a California bike and California motorcycles have an emissions canister. The canister itself has three exits. The innermost exit is a capped exit. The cap itself is held in place by a 
hose clamp. Keep that, you might need to reuse it. The second is the surge hose. The surge hose goes all the way to the fuel shutoff valve. From there, from the fuel shutoff valve, there's another hose that goes into the fuel vapor separator. Now this is the nipple that's not present in the aftermarket gas tank, so stay with me, I'll show you what to do with that one. So this is a stock DRZ tank. This is a California model tank, only because it has this little extra nipple here. And the last outermost exit is the purge hose. The purge hose basically goes to the carb. If you ever get lost in what goes where, there's a really, really handy dandy vacuum hose routing diagram right here, hopefully on your frame. It should be there in any case. So you can kind of see what everything is, where everything needs to go. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our shop towel and we're gonna shove it underneath here because when we disconnect this hose, it's gonna be full of gas and we don't want that to be leaking everywhere. Put the fuel petcock on, on for now. When I was on the road, I really found those 45 degree needle nose pliers that angle outward to be very, very useful. So wiggle it a little bit. This is where we're expecting some fuel. There it is. That's all. Now there's fuel in here. So. Make sure Let's spill that out. That's it. So we have the fuel line, the vacuum line, and then for California models, we have another line that goes from the back right here of the tank into this module and towards the rear to the canister. This is the canister here. This is the emissions canister, so we're looking, we're following this middle line, this middle hose, and if you follow it, it's going to be this one. It goes back through here, comes back through here, and it's the same clip. There it is. Move that down. This tank is ready come off just pull it when you put it somewhere make sure that you don't dig the vacuum line and the petcock into the ground just set it up like that you don't want to get that dirty what we're going to do now is loosen that bolt and this bolt here so that i can remove it from the vehicle first though we have to disconnect if you follow this control here there are two that you have to disconnect the next step is to release these throttle cables right here so if I twist the throttle that's what happens and we're gonna do that by using a 10 mil wrench and we're just going to release this cable right here and do the same with this one just break it loose make the loose enough to get it out of there like that so you see here well just like that we'll leave that one to the right there it is so I'm just gonna leave this one right left pretty self-explanatory so that you know how to put it back together okay the next step hello 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 is to take a screwdriver and loosen up this and this phillips screw 
just so then we can remove it from the vehicle. Let's do that now. We're just gonna loosen this guy up. Not all the way, just enough to make it loose. Same here. Now the tricky part is to get this guy, get the carb out. That requires some finesse. Careful not to damage the rubber seal. Start from removing the rear end of it first. There's just not a lot of room to work here. Now you can come on this side and release, remove this hose as well. It's also been removed. We don't want any dirt going into those ports, so make sure you plug that up. Now, if this is extremely dirty and extremely sandy, what you want to do is spray that down so that whenever we take the carburetor off, none of those particles and dust and dirt and sand go into the actual mechanism. So you want to create as clean of an environment as possible. All right, let's get right into it. This is the left side of the motorcycle with the quote-unquote choke it's not exactly a choke we just refer to it as that so what I'm gonna do before I start taking anything off this is a good idea just for all of you who are doing this for the first time I'm gonna take a photo so I know exactly where each of these hoses and fittings is supposed to go I'll take photos from two different angles and then I can start handling it. So what I'm going to do is start disassembling it further. That one goes there. We have a little need needle nose pliers for this one here. It's just easier to handle when it's all taken apart. Taking off the fuel line, like that. And here I'm gonna write to carb fuel line. This is vacuum to carb. There it is. What I'm going to do is basically just spray it down because I don't want any of the dirt from the carb itself to, to get into the guts of the thing. Try not to get it on any of the plastic or rubber parts. And try not to breathe this stuff in. I'm gonna start with the bottom, take out the float. Now be careful all the fittings are typically brass and very soft so don't over tighten anything.
I'm gonna draw everything the way that I took it off. This one is tied to the idle adjuster. Okay. Let's take the float off. Looks fairly clean. I'm gonna try to avoid getting it on the rubber gasket. Pat it down, make it clean. So went off this way. This is how it's gonna go back in. And just so I kind of remember, I'm gonna put these back on. Remember, take pictures. Let's take the pilot jet off. This looks like an eight mil. And you can tell that's very gunked up right there. <laughs> okay, so this has been cleaned. It was completely clogged up. What you wanna do is clean it to the effect where when you pour when you spray through it, make sure it doesn't get in your face. Be very careful, do this outside, that it, it's freely flowing straight through it. You can see there's a stream of jet stream coming straight through it. You're not gonna be able to see it now, but you point it towards the light, the sun, and you're supposed to be able to see through it. There it is. It's completely clogged, so keep that there for a second. Okay. Just make sure that this little pin bounces back freely. And this looks good. Notice when you disassemble these two pilots, don't get messed up with their sizes because they're exactly the same except for the opening. I don't know if the camera's going to be able to pick that up, but one is significantly more open than the other. You want the more open one, the larger hole, to go into this main pilot. Flip it on the other side. Now this is spring loaded. There's a spring here in the middle. So be careful. When you're taking it off. Not to lose anything. Right. Okay. To the spring. Take needle nose and we'll gently pull the needle out. There it is. Examine the diaphragm. There are no rips or tears into diaphragm as well. This is something you don't want. The
carbon carb cleaner to touch because it's not really meant for it the rubber overall looks pretty clean Let's also clean this part here. This is spring loaded. Keep your finger on it. I feel the tension already. It wants to come up. Be very careful. I don't like working with gloves, but this stuff is all very corrosive. Okay. Spraying through, making sure everything's coming out of somewhere. You can see my gloves are just getting eaten up by this. Just so you are informed, there is a pilot screw here. This here in the middle is the pilot screw. States like California don't want you messing with that. That's why they put this metal plug there. So what you can do is use a typically a 1 8 uh, drill bit and make sure you stop drilling as soon as you poke through it pull that out something sharp a needle nose pliers make sure you clean all the metal shavings off and that will expose the pilot screw so to remove it you would first screw it all the way in clockwise just to measure exactly how many turns it takes for it to be seated because that's important to know when you are replacing it to back it out exactly where it was before to match the original conditions and then you should try to replace this this uh, little plug as well all right now we can start putting it back together Doesn't have to be crazy tight either.
Much better. Much better. Okay. All that's set. This is seated. This is free flying. You want to record the height as well. From the bottom. Okay. Write that down somewhere. Now we need this guy. Goes in like that. And then okay. Just start them. You want to be doing opposite corners when you're tightening anything like this so you don't warp it. Okay, all four are in. Now we can slowly start tightening them in crisscross fashion. Doesn't need to be crazy tight. Just like that. Okay. Let's put this guy back in. Make sure it's properly seated. Looks right. Come out on the float side. Don't forget the little rubber gasket. There's only one way that can go in, so you can't screw that up. Looks good. Okay. Sounds right. This is where your pictorial diagram is going to help. You don't have to leave anything to memory. I'm a fan. Whatever makes the job easier. Gas line. Let's put this guy back. And the other one is like so. And this one goes here. Well, let's put it back together now and see how she runs. One of the worst parts of carb work is trying to fit it in these two rubber seats. It helps to tilt it this way. So like that, so that you can get it in. 
and try to fit in the left one first as you can see I started to almost have it see it slowly it's almost through so that's almost through and it you can use your right hand to squeeze on this side so I need two hands to do this I'm gonna put the camera down I'm gonna fit it in that way okay so I got it in time to tighten this guy down make sure you get this tight and that there are no nothing no wrinkled rubber underneath because these seals have to be tight otherwise your vacuum air mixture is going to be off your bike is not going to want to start so you see how there's a notch here from the carb into the notch of the rubber make sure that's exactly where it needs to be I had to take the ring on this side off because it was just difficult to work with. Just make sure if you do that, that this screw fell into this little abyss here. So it was really annoying to have to use a magnet to get it. As such, There it is now the game of locating the screw oh lucky in the deep grass everything about this work is awkward so try not to get frustrated break it down if you need to it's not fun so if you're going with that mindset then you know what to expect you're managing your expectations so to speak you're not gonna like it i can't imagine anybody liking doing this on a hot sunny day like today but if you get a bike like this keep that in mind it'll need to be done some service can be done without removing the carb accessing the jet needle from here the plunger is on the bottom but most of it will definitely need to be taken apart okay so now that we have that I'm going to run this back hopefully there's just no place to work here None. whatever you do you still have to be kind of ginger about it because you don't want to crack any of these plastic connectors there you go That goes in the petcock, and that goes in the petcock. That goes right there. For this particular hose, it's advisable that the clamp is positioned on this side because it's easier to access. It's not easy at all, but it's easier. Okay. All this is set. All this is good. We're just going to do a temporary dry run here. fingers crossed because I don't want to have to do this again but the pilot screw was very plugged up so I'm hoping that was the issue Boom. Boom. I did disconnect the battery negative terminal just not to trip out the solenoid I always like to do that every time I'm working on the bike. No matter what it is, I just there's just so much stuff here that is connected and has some sort of circuit going through it. So here we go. Chokes in. Oh, I didn't connect the 
the throttle cables at all on the other side. Let me do that. The throttle cables are back. And there she is. Seems like she runs like she should. Feels good, man. I don't want to do this again. Oh, spent half of my Saturday cleaning this fucker out. But she runs like she should. So I think we're good. I'm gonna take her for a spin and let her know, uh, let you know how it went. But uh, there it is. A decent, decently complicated job, especially if you've never done it before. But if you buy a bike, uh, bike with a carb, just make sure you keep in mind that this will be part of your life from then on out. Some people enjoy it, I don't. Nick, I'm out. Till next time.